think we are made great strides uh, in uh, developing and equaling the outcomes of the world's best hospitals in, in the world. Not just Apollo, in, uh, several of our hospitals. And I'm not surprised because this is how I, I dared do that because an Indian doctor was outstanding uh, overseas. When I was in the US, everybody appreciated Indian doctor. I said, if Indian doctor is, is outstanding overseas, why can't we have that same doctor do outstanding things in the country? So I think that was my strong uh, element of the power of a doctor. And what we, we, I put behind was the various processes and protocols. And I'm happy today uh, the process of protocols that India follows in majority of the hospitals is giving world-class outcomes. So in that aspect, I think I'm, I'm very satisfied that uh, many, many, many wonderful things have happened. But what uh, beyond, that. beyond that is the number of people. You know, what have, we done? what have I done? If Apollo takes it, have we have treated 40 million people. All the private hospitals together is probably treating maybe 200 million people. Uh, but there is a large number of people who have no access to health care. This is why, first of all, uh, I must say, 10 years ago when I realized that a patient who comes to the hospital travels more than 100, 200 kilometers. And when he comes into the hospital, leave alone the, the disease pattern or the cost of the disease, his burden of coming into a metro, uh, that w was enormous. And sometimes he spent more uh, time and effort and money, uh, more than the medical expense. This is why we started another new concept called the REACH hospitals. I asked the then Prime Minister, uh, Sri Manmohan Singh, will you inaugurate this concept? I remember the, Prince, the Secretary said, Prime Minister cannot inaugurate a concept. But he did. But I'm happy to say that we have close to 30 hospitals on the REACH model today, and several others have followed this model. But what we need is we need to do more in the tie to tie through cities and perhaps even go into the uh, you know, rural areas using technology. And this is what we're trying now, to using technology, how can I get into the rural areas? There's a huge challenge uh, for healthcare in India, because of the, the, not because of the first two. The first is we have evaluated saying we can bring the quality. We have said we can bring that cost benefit. You know, 10%. You know, people just, you know, recently, the US, UK government asked us to present, how did you become world number one in organ transplant, kidney, liver, and transplant program? And then how does your outcomes are so wonderful, and your costs are only 10% of the international cost? So we told them our process protocols that were built in. And this is where I think the strength is that we have done those and what using technology, how do we complete the most necessary thing, giving access to a lot of people. And this is where I think the government has, has a, will give a very strong message for, for the country, saying we, we want to make a, a very big difference uh, in the health of our people. And we, on behalf of Nat Health and Apollo in particular, uh, will support this vision. And we have many things. I think we're just waiting for the IT to roll out. I always mention this. The last gift uh, our present prime, president of India, uh, His Excellency Pranam Mukherjee, the gift he gave to healthcare boss, giving 5,000 rupees tax exemption for preventive healthcare. So we went and talked to him saying, you know what India needs is people, you know, people call Apollo very expensive. You know why? They come with a cancer problem. We do have to do the diagnosis. We have to do surgery, uh, give radiation, chemotherapy, and probably even bone marrow transplantation. Suppose the same individual has come to us early enough. We could make a whole lot of a difference. I, I have a vision, you know, which I probably would want to tell uh, the government and our, our health minister saying, one of the things they can do, for example, we can eradicate cervical cancer. 
uh, deaths from cervical cancer, not eradicate cervical cancer, because if you screen them, there's a five-year gap. If you screen them, you can detect them early enough and then cure them and give them a normal life. So death from cervical cancer can, I think this is what we need to move on. This is what I hope Nat Health, in our vision when we are working together, uh, we can do such things. Like another thing I would want, you know, with the, in transplants, <coughs> as I said, we became number one in the world, uh, but still the number of cadaver do uh, donors in the country is very, very low, except in Tamil Nadu, which took the leadership. We probably do about 350 to 400 uh, cadaver transplant in that, in, in that highest in the India. But of course, suppose, you know, the government comes and does more than Singapore. In Singapore, you state saying that uh, my organ can be uh, taken for, uh, for a cadaver when I die. I, they, my organs can be used. Instead, if government comes forward and saying, I'll go one step more and then say, you must declare when you're alive whether your organs can be taken or not taken. Yes or no. Yes or no. Yes. You know, it will be a phenomenal thing. Then India will show the leadership for the rest, rest of the world. And what is the result? The, uh, the blindness in our country will be wiped off with the number of corneas that will be available. There are hundreds of thousands of, of people who are suffering from renal disease. We could take care of them. Now, uh, liver, you know, there's an acute shortage uh, of people who need liver and the availability of the donor liver. And more than anything time. else, uh, the outcomes, you know, you know like for example, we are now doing heart surgery, heart transplants, heart lung transplants, uh, pancreatic transplants, intestinal transplants, everything that other uh, centers in the world is doing or not doing, we are doing in our country with the wonderful outcomes. So I think having this advantage, India could make a major stride in, uh, but I, we want somebody to take the leadership. I remember, I don't know if you know, <coughs> the Transplant Act was passed when the uh, session of the parliament was called to impeach session. So I went to the then uh, Minister for Parliamentary Affairs, V.C. Sukla, and told him, since you don't have a majority to impeach session, would you pass this uh, 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 Transplant Act? He said, come, let's go to the Prime Minister. So we went to see Nasivaraji. Nasivaraji said, yes, yes, I promised Dr. Reddy. And that's how the act was passed. But even now, it's a limb act, because unless they redefine the uh, definition of brain death. Yeah. Now, Tamil Nadu the government has done and given the leadership. Now, several states are copying it. Andhra has done it, and yeah. it's picking up there. Karnataka is picking up. I hope, uh, you know, uh, Pan-India, it will make, make a very huge impact for those unfortunate people who have this. During the course of the day, we are uh, talking about the medical ethics. Ethics, number one, what is the responsibility of a doctor? The responsibility of a doctor is not just curing him. The responsibility of a doctor is also to see what does the patient desire? How do you trust, become his trust? How do you deliver the for, for purpose for which he has come? For that, <coughs> you must establish a good patient communication system. You know, you must be able to listen to him. You know, I think it's, it's very essential that we bring back and the ethics, and I'm happy uh, Nat Health, along with uh, 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 I have um, Indian Healthcare Lab, IMA, is releasing the medical ethics. I'm a remote, uh, drought-prone village where even drinking water is difficult. So fortunately, I could build a hospital for them. I built a school for them. Now we have a major program called the Total Health. Total health is what I have, I have adopted, 70,000 people. By adopting 70,000 people from cradle to the grave, what we are promised to do for them 
are attempting to do for them is to look after their <coughs> physical health, spiritual health, ecological health, and mental health. This is what, and it's not free. Uh, if the, suppose the cost of medicines or cost of tests is going to be, let's say, a thousand, they will pay anywhere from 50 rupees to 500 rupees. So they must pay something, depending on their ability to pay. But no, nothing is denied. But it's not just the medical treatment. We have already started things saying, how do you engage them? How do you engage them in employment? So we have the skills training center we have started. How do you engage them in relaxation? Yoga, meditation, and the Brahma Kumaris are working on meditation and things like that. So all those programs, we have just begun. We have completely done the blood work for over 15,000 people. Today, in, uh, in medicine, we still depend on what's called the Framingham study to predict and give for what is the cost for any disease. That's the only thing that's available for us in the world, which is over 300 years old, 150 years old. But I think this study that we're starting from the 70,000 people, because we have done very systematically taken the entire uh, data, captured the entire data, you see, unfortunately, the IT is so powerful, so we'll be able to preserve, collect the data, preserve it, and monitor them throughout their lives. I think we'll give it will be a very valuable thing for the country and the people, uh, how we can avoid disease, how can we manage better if an illness comes in? And all of these things, I think, is going to be a very useful, apart from making them healthy and happy. My main thing is, what can I give back to them, health and happiness? Uh, but this is a small number compared to 1.3 billion of Indians. But I think it will be a very nice example that uh, we can replicate in the rest of the country. Yeah, right. IT plays a big role. IT is going to be, really be the, the goal uh, trendsetter in transforming the way we do practice health today. I just heard from my team, uh, Arunachal Pradesh asked them to do telemedicine centers. A couple of centers are 18,000 square feet high. You know, freezing point, minus 20 degrees. How does telemedicine work from there? But they found a way how the systems will work, how they will be able to take, and they have a challenge and they've taken, undertaken their contract to be able to do telemedicine from that level. So I think we are the first in the country to start telemedicine, probably first in the world to use satellite telemedicine. Uh, in, uh, in 2002, when uh, Bill Clinton, the, His Excellency Bill Clinton, when he visited India as the President of the United States, he came to Hyderabad. So we connected my village to Hyderabad, and a young girl was being examined in the village, and the echocardiography transmitted to a cardiologist at Hyderabad. The cardiologist saw that and told the mother, your daughter has got a hole in the heart, and uh, please send the child to us during vacation. We'll fix it. When the school reopens, uh, she will rejoin. But he said another wonderful word. He told the mother, your child will lead a normal life. You know, you could see tears rolling out of Bill Clinton. And he said, Dr. Reddy, you're doing a very wonderful thing. The rest of the world should follow your lead so that people in a remote place can, can benefit from this high-tech medicine. I think this is what we're doing. We are already connected to a number of countries across the world, but uh, the way the government of India has promised the 3G, 4G, and broadband, I'm sure the healthcare will take full advantage and transform the way we do. And I think that is the hope for the people who are living in remote places, in the hilly areas. We already have put up for Isha Foundation. In the hilly station, we have put a tele telemedicine center. I think many of these will come the moment IT is available. And we know now how to use it. I think what it should be to even we have some uh, things which I would like to discuss with IMA and with other doctors. What can we do in relearning? How to manage a diabetic patient? How to manage a patient with cardiorespiratory risk factors so that he doesn't get heart attack at age 30? Because you know, it's dreadful. The heart attacks in India is different from the heart attack of an American. 
I think it's two different diseases. You know why? The heart disease in Indians, uh, between the ages 35 and 45, occurs five times more than a Caucasian. So it's a different uh, phenomenon. So this is where I think uh, we can make a difference in, in trying to ad prevent uh, this catastrophe. This is where I think uh, we said, how can we educate him to manage patients with diabetes? How can we manage a patient with cardiorespiratory risk factors? And then similarly, how can you diagnose cancer early? And uh, on infections, give them immunization. Uh, thank you very much. First, I compliment uh, Times of India, who has taken a lot um, uh, for, for the tremendous lead that you have taken in trying to make a difference in healthcare in several aspects. I see that organ donation, you have done a lot and you are still doing more. I we hope the whole country will pick it up. Two back, we had another yeah, just yesterday. Yesterday, yesterday paper. I was uh, there. Yeah, so it's, it's, uh, it's very wonderful. I think that gives so many times people come and tell me, Dr. Reddy, yesterday they asked for the, my relatives' organs. I'm sorry we didn't do it. Today we feel sorry that it's only ashes. It could have been living in others' lives. The first transplant, I told the lady, young lady, 22-year-old lady, with a husband of 24 who, who died in the road accident. I said, your husband will live in others' lives. And everybody refused, the, the mother, father, father-in-law, mother-in-law refused. The lady came back and said, I want to know how you, he will live in others' lives. When I said, if you put the heart into somebody else's uh, heart who in end-stage disease, for him it's a new life. Similarly, the kidney, the heart, the uh, kidney, you know, all of these. So that lady finally agreed. So our first multi-organ transplant is on that 24-year-old uh, man and consent given by his wife, who is a 22-year-old. Even today, she comes to the hospital. You know why? Not to ask for any favor. Just, she says, whenever I get depressed, I come to the, uh, the lobby and say, my husband is alive in Tamil lives. I think this is what you need to spread.